Legendary Passages, Episode 27, The Nemean Odes, Songs of Heracles and Myrmidons from the Odes of Pindar. Last time we heard how Heracles aided the gods against the giants. This passage is three songs composed for athletes. The first is for Chromios of Aetna and relates the tale of baby Heracles. The second is for Temidemos of Athens and compares him to many heroes of old. The last is for Aristoclides of Aegina and focuses on the heroes born of that isle, Peleus and Telamon, and especially Achilles. The Nemean Odes, a legendary passage from the extant Odes of Pindar, translated by Ernest Myers. For Chromios of Aetna, winner in the chariot race. This Chromios was a son of Aegisidamos and brother-in-law of Heron, and the same man for whom the ninth Nemean was written. He had become a citizen of Hieron's new city of Aetna, and won this victory in 473 BC. This ode seems to have been sung before his house in Ortigia, a peninsula on which part of Syracuse was built, and in which was the fountain Arethusa. The legend of Arethusa and Alephos explains the epithets of Ortigia with which this ode opens. The greater part of the ode is occupied with the story of Heracles, perhaps because Chromios was of the Hellean tribe and thus traced his descent to Heracles. O resting place, August of Alephos, Ortigia, scion of famous Syracuse, that thou art a couch of Artemis and a sister of Delos, from thee goeth forth the song of sweet words, to set forth the great glory of whirlwind-footed steeds in honor of Athenian Zeus. For now the car of Chromios and Amia stirs me to yoke to his victorious deeds the melody of a triumphal song. And thus by that man's heaven's speed might I lay my foundations in the praise of gods. In good fortune men speak well of one another, and of great games the muse is fain to tell. So then some seed of splendid words in honor of this isle which Zeus, the lord of Olympus, gave unto Persephone, and bowed his hair towards her, in sign that this teeming Sicily he would exalt to be the best land in the fruitful earth, with gorgeous crown of citadels. And the son of Cronos gave unto her a people that wooeth mailed war, a people of the horse and of the spear, and knowing well the touch of Olympia's golden olive leaves. Thus shoot I arrows many, and without falsehood I have hit the mark. And now at the doors of the hall of a hospitable man, I stand to sing a goodly song, where is prepared for me a friendly feast, and not unwanted in that house are frequent stranger guests. Thus hath he found good friends to pour a quenching flood on the moldering fire of reproach. Each hath his several art, but in straight paths it behoove him to walk, and to strive hard, wherein his nature setteth him. Thus worketh strength and act, and mind and counsels, when one is born to foresee what shall come after. In thy nature, son of Aegisthemus, are uses both for this and that. I love not to keep hidden in my house great wealth, but to have joy of that I have, and to have repute of liberality to my friends, for the hopes of much laboring men seem to me even as mine. Now I to Heracles cleave right willingly, among high deeds of valor rousing an ancient tale, now that when from his mother's womb the son of Zeus, escaping the birth pain, came quickly into the glorious light with his twin brother, not unobserved of Hera did he put on the saffron swaddling bands, but the queen of gods in the kindling of her anger sent presently two snakes, and they, when the doors were opened, went right on into the wide bedchamber, hastening to entwine the children that they should be a prey to their fierce teeth. But the boy lifted up his head upright, and was first to essay the fight, seizing with inevitable grasp of both his hands the two serpents by the necks, and time, as he strangled them, forced the breath out of their monstrous forms. But a shock unendurable startled the women about Alcmene's bed, yea, and herself too started to her feet from the couch half-robed, and would fain have beaten back the fierce beast's violence quickly ran thronging thither with bronze arms the captains of the sons of Cadmus, 
and brandishing in his hand, his sword bare of its sheath, came Amphitryon, smitten with sharp pain. For everyone alike is grieved by the ills of his own house, but the heart is soon quit of sorrow that careth for another's care. And he stood in amazement, and gladness mingled with his fear, for he saw the marvelous courage and might of his son, since the immortals had turned to the contrary, the saying of the messengers unto him. Then he called a man that lived nigh to him, a chosen prophet of the Most High Zeus, Tiresias the true seer. And he set forth to him, and to all his company, with what manner of fortune should the child have his lot cast, how many lawless monsters on the dry land, how many on the sea he should destroy. Others, moreover, of men the hatefulest, who walked in guile and insolence, he prophesied that he should deliver over him to death saying that when on Phlegra's plain the gods should meet the giants in battle, beneath the rush of his arrows their bright hair should be soiled with earth. But he in peace himself should obtain a reward of rest from his great toils, throughout all time continually within the house of bliss. And after that he had received fair Hebe to be his bride, and made his marriage feast, should remain beside Zeus, the son of Kronos, well pleased with his dwelling place divine. For Timodemos of Athens, winner in the Pancration. The date of this ode is unknown, but would seem to have been sung at Athens on the winner's return home. He belonged to the clan of Timodemodae of Salamis, but to the deem of Acarne. As to the nature of the Pancration, it was a combination of wrestling and boxing, probably with wide license of rules. The best extant illustration of it in sculpture is the famous group of the Pancratiatis commonly called the Lutatori, in the tribute of the Uffizini in Florence. From the self-same beginning, whence the Homerid bards draw out the lichen story of their song, even a prelude calling upon Zeus, so also Nemean Zeus, it is in whose far famous grove this man hath attained underlying his first foundation of victory in the sacred games. And yet again was the son of Timonus, if in the way of his fathers guiding him straight this age hath given him to a glory of the great Athens, yet again and often must he pluck the noble flower of Ispian games, and in the Pythian conquer. Like is it that not far from the mountain brood of Peleides shall be the rising of Orion. Well able verily is Salamis to rear a man of battles, so at Troy was Hector aware of Aeus, and now, O Timodemus, Art thou glorified by stubborn prowess in the Pancration? The Carni of old was famous for its men, and as touching games, the Timodemidae rank there preeminent. Beneath the Parnassus' lordly height, they won four victories in the games. Moreover, in the valleys of noble Pelops, they have attained eight crowns at the hands of the men of Corinth, and seven at Nemea, and at home, more than may be numbered, at the games of Zeus. To whose glory, O citizens, sing for Timodeus a song of triumph, and bring him an honor home, and chant our prelude tunefully. For Aristocolides of Aegina, winner in the Pancration. The date of the victory is unknown. The ode seems to have been written long afterwards, probably for some anniversary celebration of the event. O divine muse, our mother, I pray thee, come into this Dorian isle, Aegina, stranger thronged, for the sacred festival of the Nemean Games. For by the waters of Asopos young men await thee, skilled to sing sweet songs of triumph, and desiring to hear thy call. For various recompense, or various acts athirst, thirst, but victory in the games, above all, love the song of crowds and valiant deans of the fittest follower. Thereof grant us large store for our skill, and to the king of heaven, with its thronging clouds, do thou, who art his daughter, being a noble lay. I will marry the same to the voices of singers and to the lyre. A pleasant labor shall be mine, glorifying this land, where of old the Myrmidons dwelt, whose ancient meeting place, Aristocolide, through thy favor, hath not sullied with reproach by any softness in the forceful strife of the Pancration. But a healing remedy of wearying blows, he hath won at least in this fair victory, in the deep-lying plain of Nemea. Now if this son of Aristophanes, being fair of form, and achieving deeds as fair, 
hath thus attained under the height of manly excellence. No further is it possible for him to sail untraversed, see beyond the pillars of Heracles, which the hero gods set to be wide-famed, witnesses of the end of voyaging. For he had overcome enormous wild beasts on the seas, and tracked the streams through marshes to where he came to the goal that turned him to go back homeward. And there did he mark the ends of the earth. But to what headland of strange shore, O my soul, art thou carrying aside the course of my ship? To Iacos and to his race, I charge thee, bring the muse. Herein is perfect justice to speak of the praise of good men. Neither are desires for things alien, the best for men to cherish. Search first at home, a fitting glory of thy sweet song, hast thou gotten there in deeds of ancient valor. Glad was King Peleus when he cut him his gigantic spear, he who took Iolcus by a single arm, without help of any host, he who held firm in the struggle Thetis, the daughter of the sea. Also the city of Laomedon did mighty Telamon sack, when he fought with Iolcus by his side, and again to the war of the Amazons, with brazen bows he followed him. Neither at any time did man-subduing terror abate the vigor of his soul, by inborn worth doth one prevail mightily, but whoso hath but precepts is a vain man, and is fain now for this thing, and now again for that. But a sure step planteth he not at any time, but handleth countless enterprises with a purpose that achieveth not. Now Achilles of the yellow hair, while he dwelt in the house of Philyra, being yet a child, made mighty deeds his play and brandishing many a time his little javelin in his hands. Swift as the wind he dealt death to wild lions in the fight, and boars he slew also, and dragged their heaving bodies to the centaur, son of Cronos, a six years child when he began, and thenceforward continually. And Artemis marveled at him, and brave Athena, when he slew deer without dogs or device of nets, for by fleetness of foot he overcame them. This story also of the men of old I have heard, how within his cavern of stone the deep counseled Chiron rear Jason, and next Asclepios, whom he taught to apportion healing drugs with a gentle hand. And after this it was that he saw the espousals of Nereus' daughter of the shining wrists, and fondling nursed her son, strongest of men, rearing his soul in a life of harmony, until, by blowing of sea winds wafted to Troy, he should await the war cry of the Lycaeans, and of the Phygrians, and of the Dardanians, cried to the clashing of spears, and joining in battle with the lancer Ethiops, hand to hand, should fix this purpose in his soul, that their chieftain Memnon, Elenos' fiery cousin, should go back again to his home no more. Thenceforward burneth ever a far-shining light for the house of Iacos, for thine, O Zeus, is their blood, even as thine also are the games whereat my song is aimed, by the voice of the young men of the land, proclaiming aloud her joy. For victorious Aristocleides hath well earned a cheer, in that he brought new renown to this island, and to the theoroi of the Pythian god, by striving for glory in the games. By trial is the issue manifest, wherein may one be more excellent than his fellows, whether among boys a boy, or among men a man, or in the third age among elders, according to the nature of our mortal race. Four virtues doth the long life bring, and biddeth one fit his thought to the things about him. From such virtues this man is not far. Friend, fare thee well. I send to thee this honey mingled with white milk, and the dew of the mixing hangeth round about it, to be a drink of minstrelly distilled in the breathings of Aeolian flutes, albeit to come full late. Swift is the eagle among the birds of the air, who seizeth presently with his feet a speckled prey, seeking it from afar off. But in lowly places dwell the chattering daws. To thee, at least, by will of the throne of Cleoi, for sake of thy zeal in the games, from Nemea and from Epidaurus and from Megara, hath a great light shine.